Welcome everybody. In this video I'm going to show you how to search for your photos in Lightroom. Now searching in Lightroom is referred to as filtering and you can filter on just about any kind of criterion that you can imagine. So keywords, flags, stars, color labels, camera type, exposure, ISO, location, etc, etc. Just about any of the metadata that's associated with your files. Now the first step in any successful search in Lightroom is to tell Lightroom where you want to search. So do you want to search a particular folder of photos, for example, or a particular collection? Or do you want to search your entire Lightroom catalog? If you want to search the entire catalog, you'll click on All Photographs here. Let me go ahead and go back to searching just the Seattle Snow folder. After saying where you want to search, you're ready to say what you want to search for using Lightroom's filter bars. Now we have the main library filter functionality up here above the grid. If you're not in grid view, you won't see this library filter bar. I'll do E for loop just to prove that you can't see the filter bar. You can only use this filter bar in grid view. If you're in grid view and you don't see the library filter bar, then go up to view show filter bar. You also have a small filter bar here in the film strip. And again, if you don't have the film strip showing, you won't see that one either. Now the small one in the film strip allows you to filter based on flags, stars, and color labels. And that's it. The one at the top of the grid is much more fully functional. Now I used to tell students not to use this one in the film strip. The reason is that it's so close to flag stars and color labels in the toolbar here that students tend to get confused between the two. But it's so handy that I started to feel bad that I wasn't talking about it. If you're going to use it though, make sure you don't get the two confused. Here in the toolbar, flags, stars, and color labels are for assigning information to the photo. So if I click on the second star in the toolbar here, I get two stars on this photo. That's very different from the filter bar. If I want to filter and just show my two star photos, I'm going to click on the second star. But the first time I do it, I'm just activating the filter bar. It's not actually narrowing this down to two stars yet. So I need to click again to actually filter on two stars. Now because I have this set to equal, it's showing me just two stars. If I had this set to greater than or equal to, of course it would show me two, three, four, and five star photos. To turn off a filter in this filter bar at the bottom, I'm going to click back on the second star here to say no, I don't want two stars anymore. Same with flags and color labels. So if I want to see my pick flags, I'm going to click on this first flag. I don't have any in this particular folder that I'm filtering. If I want to turn off that filter, I'm going to click back on that flag. And as I told you in the Evaluating Photos video, if you get confused amongst these flags or what you have turned on and off, you can always right click and choose any particular subset of photos that you want according to flag status. I'm going to click in the gray here just to close that dialog. Now let's talk about the main dialog here. But first, think about where do I want to search? What I want to do is find all of my five-star coastal landscape photographs. I want to search my entire catalog. So I'll come up to the catalog section, click on all photographs, and then I'll start to use the library filter bar. Now I want five-star photos. Flags, stars, and color labels are under attribute here. So I click on attribute, and then I say five stars. I just click on the fifth star. Next, I want to specify two keywords, landscape and coast. Now keywords are located in the metadata section, so I'm going to click on metadata. Now I'm just going to work from left to right in the columns. I don't have any filtering here going on at this point. I don't want to filter on date, so I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to choose keyword. But notice all of the metadata here that you can search based on. File type, DNG files, JPEGs, RAW files, etc. Labels, all kinds of camera and exposure information, GPS data, map location, 
location information, copyright status, creator information. Think about you're looking for all your photos that you haven't copyrighted yet. And more. Now what's outside of the dialog are metadata status. So for those of you writing your changes out to XMP, metadata status is a way to see which ones are not up to date or which ones you have conflicts with. Process version is outside the video screen. I'll get to that when I talk about the develop module. So lots and lots of choices. But right now, we're looking for our landscape photos. So I'm going to click on the drop down, and I'm going to choose Keyword. Now at this point, it gives me a list of all the keywords on photos that have made it this far into my search. So all of the keywords on my five star photos. Let me collapse the film strip so we have a little bit more room. So I'm going to choose Landscape. Now at this point, I need an AND condition. Keyword landscape and keyword coast. For an and condition in the metadata panel, I just go to the next column. So I don't want to search on camera at this point. I want to search again on keyword. Keyword landscape and keyword coast. So now I have my five star landscape coast photos. Now let's say also that I need them to be from 2010. I would come over to the next column because I need another and condition and I don't want to filter on lens. I want to filter this time on date. Now in this case, there's only one date. So the only five star landscape coast photos I have are from February 16, 2010. But let's pretend there were more than one date in this list. If I needed them to be from a particular year, I could click at the year level. If I needed them to be from a particular day, I could click on the day level. I can also click on the month level. So I can get down to whatever subset of photos that I need to get down to. Now to turn this filter off and to go back to seeing all of my photographs, I'm going to click on None up here. Now let's say I wanted to do a different search. I want to find all of my portrait photos. So portrait is a keyword. So I'm going to go into metadata. Now notice how it still remembers my last search. So to truly reset everything, so that it doesn't even remember my last search, I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm going to click on All. When I click on All across all the columns, there's no filtering going on because it's saying, show me my photographs with all keywords, meaning any keyword, with all dates, with all labels, etc. So anytime they're on All, you have in fact completely reset the filter. It's also true that if I go into Attribute to say, show me just my picked photos, my pick flag photos, that when I click on Attribute, it's going to remember the five star filter I had last time. To turn that off, I'm just going to click back on the fifth star here. So now I'm truly seeing all the photos. Now I could click on the pick flag to see just my picked photos in my catalog. So because it still remembers my old search, my last search, I tend to turn things off piece by piece. So I'll turn off my pick flag search by clicking back on the pick flag. Now let's take a look at some of the other options you have. Within Attribute, as I mentioned, you have pick, you have flag, stars, color labels. You also have master photos versus virtual copies. I haven't gotten into what virtual copies are yet but know that you can search for your virtual copies. And then you also have a video icon here. So you can find your videos. I don't think I have any in the catalog at this point. So I'm not seeing any at this point. Now once I turn things off, if I don't want to, for example, see the attribute bar here, I'll just click back on the word attribute and it will be gone. So now I'm back to seeing all of my photographs. Now let's take a look at text searches. So again, I'm going to search my entire catalog, but I want to find a particular file name, and I know it has the number 11 in it. I'm going to click on text, and I'm going to choose here from the text drop-down, file name. But notice all the other choices, titles, captions, keywords, so another way to do keyword searches. And then searching through subsets of metadata. I'm going to say file name. And over here where the magnifier is, I'm going to type 11. And I don't even need to hit enter. It just immediately starts searching and comes up with the results lightning quick. So all of these photos have 11 in the file name. 
Now I could also say it has to start with or end with 11. So I don't have to put the entire file name if I don't have it or don't want to type that much. Now I often say search any searchable field. I'm not specific about what Lightroom searches. For example, I could type Coast here and it will search file name, folder name, keywords, etc. So some of these photos have a keyword of Coast and some of the photos actually have a file name of Coast. Because I'm searching any searchable field, they all come up. I'm going to go ahead and hit the X here to cancel that search and I'll click back on text to collapse that text bar. Now there are two more things I want to show you. The first one is in the metadata panel. So I want to do a search this time for all of my photos that are either landscapes or portraits. I'm going to come back into metadata because keywords are metadata. Everything here is on all so I know that nothing is being searched for or filtered on at this point. And in the first column I'm going to choose the keyword landscapes. Now if I said landscape in this column and keyword equals portrait in this column, I would only be getting photos that contain both of those keywords. I don't have any photos that are both landscapes and portraits. I want an OR condition. To get an OR condition, I'm simply going to select in this first column both of those keywords. So I've got landscape. I'll come down here further. Portraits is under types of photography. Now to select both of them, I'm going to hold down the controller command key as I click on this second keyword. You can see as I scroll up that now they're both selected. So controller command will select multiple choices from the same column. So that's how you would get an OR condition. Let's say I wanted, I wanted to look at all of the photos from two of my lenses. So I'm going to choose lens here. And what I want is my 17 to 85 and my 70 to 300. So now I'm seeing all of the photos from those two. Now I want to show you the consequence of not saying where you want to search before you say what you want to search for. So right now I've found all my photos with those two lenses. But after I did that, I realized that I didn't want to search my entire catalog. I was really just looking for those lenses within a particular folder or that was my intention. So now I'm going to come down here and choose a particular folder. I'll choose this folder here. Now this search was specific to the location I was in which was all photographs. So when I came down to this folder and clicked on it, I no longer have any kind of filter here. I'm seeing all the photographs from this folder. So I no longer have the search criteria that I specified. So at this point, with this new folder selected, I would have to redo the search. Now let me go ahead and go back to All Photographs and click on Metadata here. And fortunately it remembers my search here. So now I'm back in All Photographs. I've selected my lenses. But again, I realize that I chose the wrong location. So there is another alternative to going to the folder and then redoing the search. The alternative in Lightroom 3 and Lightroom 4 is to click on this little padlock to lock it. Now the hint that comes up is outside of the video, but it says if locked, the filter will not disable when changing sources. So if at this point I lock the filter and then I go down to a particular folder of photos, the search, in fact, will still be active. Again, if you end up in the wrong location because you forgot to say where first, click on the padlock to lock it. That way, when you go to the new location, the search will still be active. Now, in this particular folder of photos, I don't have any photos that were shot with these lenses, so nothing is showing here. So I finished the video, and then I remembered just one more thing I wanted to show you, one really handy tip. There's always just one more thing, but I think you're going to appreciate this. Now let's say I wanted to do a search of my entire catalog for something. So I'll click on All Photographs. And let's just say for the sake of example that I want to find all of my five-star photos. Then I found the photo that I was looking for. We'll say this one. Now I want to know what folder it's in. There's nothing here telling me what folder it's in. And because I'm in All Photographs up here, 
I can't tell from here either. What I can do whenever I'm wondering where a photo lives is right click on the photo and say go to folder in library. It simply selects that folder. So now I know exactly where this lives. Okay, that's truly it for this video on searching for your photos in Lightroom.